welcome back to another video here on Freewell Photos. Today, we're gonna be creating what I call the keepsake effect. Now, I get inspired every time I look at a photo of my kids while they are playing with something that I may have photographed, and this effect is the thing that I think of, and I just really enjoy doing it. So I wanna teach you how to do it. I encourage you to try this on your own images, so that way you can see if this is something that works for your photography style or your own genre. If you want to pick up a copy of All One Photo Raw 2024, consider using my coupon code FREEWILLPHOTOS20. It'll save you some money when you check out, and I do make a small commission, and I also greatly appreciate it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below, and let's jump into the computer to take a look at how this effect is created. So here we are inside of On One Photo Raw, and this is the final effect. This is what we came into the editing bay with, and this is what I created in a short amount of time using this effect. So let's go ahead and go back to our original and do it all over again. All right, so now we are on our original image. The very first thing that I want to do is just activate Brilliance AI. I know a lot of people, they're not gonna get the same result with Brilliance AI and that's a touchy subject, hit or miss thing. What I recommend doing is activating it, seeing what it can do for your image. In this case, I like the way that it evened out all of the tones in the image. What I'm not a huge fan of is the way that it may have modified the color overall. So if I pull this down, you can see it leaves it more warm. And if I pull it up, well, then it makes the photo a little bit more cool. Now, because I know how I'm going to be modifying the colors in this particular image, I'm not really going to worry about that. However, what I like to do whenever I activate Brilliance AI is really take a look at the histogram because the histogram is gonna tell you what the Brilliance AI algorithm is really doing to your image. And you could see that if I turn this off, I have tons of information over here on the far right side of my histogram, but when I turn it on, I lose a lot of that information. And that may be information that I wanna keep, I'm not entirely sure. Let me show you how you can get that back. We're gonna go ahead and minimize Bruins AI, open up tone and color, and then you can just modify the highlight slider. Pulling this over to the right is going to move that histogram over to the right until it touches the corners there and pulling it to the left is just gonna tighten things up. Now, one of the best ways of visualizing what you're doing with your highlight slider is by holding down the J key. So I'm gonna hold down the J key and I'm just gonna pull this over to the right until my histogram or I, my histogram touches the far right side or I start to see these red indicators on my image. That's telling me that it's all burnt out. Now. Depending on what you plan to do with this image, you may or may not care that you're blowing out your highlights. I personally just wanna preserve my highlights because I may print this later. So I'm gonna hold down the J key, pull my highlights back until I no longer have any of that red space. And this is the most appropriate exposure for my image. And that's with a negative 50 um, adjustment here. Now, the last thing that I would recommend doing, and this is kind of optional for the effect, but you'll see how great of an impact that this step will have on the overall effect, is pulling the saturation down almost until you have a black and white image. We're gonna leave a little bit of color in there, but not a whole lot. Uh, negative 86 seems to be appropriate for this particular image. Don't worry so much about the numbers. We just want that pretty close to the very end of the saturation slider to the left, almost black and white. Now we're gonna jump into the second step, which is gonna be going over to local adjustments. And we're gonna start to hone the viewer's attention into the subject area. Now in this particular photo, I think the subject area is this little thing right here in my daughter's hands because that's what she was doing. There's an idea of photographing the verb and the verb is the thing that you're doing. The thing that she's doing is molding this piece of clay. So that's what I was really photographing is the action of my daughter photograph, or I'm sorry, that's what I was photographing my daughter molding this piece of clay. 
And I just left enough context clues, putting her into the frame and then leaving some of the evidence of what it is that she's doing. Again, telling the story of what's happening here. And that's why this is a really great technique in, uh, or this is why I'm using the keepsake technique on this particular image. We're just gonna go ahead and add an adjustment. And what I wanna do is darken the bottom left corner and the upper right corner and really just keep the bright area or the attention area right here in the middle of the frame. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to hit the letter M on my keyboard twice because that seems to be the only way to activate the masking bug. And then I am going to uh, click on, well, actually we'll just come over here to where it says shape and select reflected gradient. Now that I have the reflected gradient selected, I'm just going to click once here in the middle of the photo. And the reason why I'm doing this is because of what I want to do on both sides of the image here. So I'm just going to rotate this until it gets to about the uh, direction of rotation that I want it to be. Again, darkening down this left corner or this bottom left corner and the upper right corner and I'm just going to pull this out to the side. Now you could achieve the exact same effect that I'm making here, the at, at least the end result uh, with two separate gradient filters, but I personally just want to use one and that's why I'm using the reflected gradient. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull the exposure down quite a bit and you can see it's giving me like this laser beam of light right down the center here. And this is really the effect that I want to include in my image. Now, you can modify these uh, a little bit more later, however you see fit, but I'm just going to pull this right into her fingertip and then fade this in gradually like so. So if I hit the letter B on my keyboard to get the brush tool, you can see the overall effect. I'm gonna turn this off and on. So that way you can really see what's happening here. And I think when the image is in black and white, you can really tell the tonal variations that are happening. And that's the reason why I also like working in this way. So I'm probably going to pull down the exposure a little bit more because I really want this to be a fairly dramatic look. And for the sake of cleanliness or tidiness, I'm just going to re rename this corner burn. And burning just means that you're making something darker and dodging means that you're making something brighter. So that's the first step in modifying this particular aspect. I'm going to go ahead and hit add adjustment here. And now what I want to do is really start to shape the light in this area here. Let me get my zoom tool in this area here. I really want to shape the light and what I'm going to do is some dodging and burning so that way it looks appropriate and you know a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my brush tool this time and I'm going to hit shift X so that way I'm on the paint in option and I guess since I'm already on a negative exposure adjustment I'm just going to start with burning and you can see my opacity is down to 44 percent or 44 points whatever you want to call it uh, that just depends on how you like to work. I like to build in my effect here for this dodging and burning. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint this in. And all I'm really doing is looking to make the dark areas just a little bit darker. So that way it stands out. And what I'm finding on this particular image is 44% just seems to work well. Now, I showcase this a little bit in the black and white adjustment video that I made uh, not too long ago. But the idea here is anything that's black or darker in an image, it just helps with building more tension and interest overall in the tonality. Uh, and the back of our hand here can probably use a little bit of darkening and this doesn't have to be perfect and this is subjective. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time in this video, but just know that you can craft the light around your subject. And I really recommend dodging and burning. So if I turn this off, you, you can see that it just brings a little bit more depth and dimension. All right. So I'm just going to label this burn object. And then we're going to 
add another adjustment and this time we're going to dodge. So the way that I dodge is I usually brighten just a little bit and I open my shadows and then I also apply some structure. Now I don't know how well the structure is going to shine through but all I do is I find areas and I very lightly dodge. So it's almost like dappled light if you're familiar with that concept. And the goal here is really just like your eyes are already going to be drawn to the brightest areas and we're going to make this a little bit brighter as well compared to the rest of the image to really uh, hone in on that verb aspect of what I'm photographing here. However, uh, what I want to do is kind of capitalize on this little center area, if you will, of the item. So if I turn this off, you can see it's just making things brighter. So we're just going to call this Dodge Object. All right, so so far we only have three adjustments and let me go ahead and zoom us out. So that way we can see where we are. This is what we came into the edit bay with. And this is where we've gotten so far. And this is a drastic change. Now, this is really just honing the light overall. We're going to add one more thing to really help us with honing the light. And this one is going to be a vignette, essentially. So we're just going to click on vignette. We're going to click on edges, click in the center here. The reason we clicked edges is so that way it puts the effect into the center of our vignette tool here or our radial gradient, I should say. And then I'm just going to rotate this because uh, our light, we have it kind of already going diagonal. So just to keep it in the same fashion. Now, right now it's on an exposure negative adjustment or a negative exposure adjustment. What I want to do is brighten this area up, but not not like crazy bright. All right. I'm also going to contrast this area. The reason I want to contrast it is because it's going to play off of the light and the dark effects that we just painted in so well and really start to contour our uh, verb or the action in the image. And I really like that. And then maybe open up the shadows just a touch. And then, of course, darken down our blacks, because I think that that's important. And if I turn this off and on, you can see it just adds a little pop of light. And things don't have to be uh, entirely perfect. This is, you know, only if your subject matter needs it, which I did think that it needs it here. So I'm just going to call this Dodge Center and we'll leave that be. So let me interrupt here for a second and just ask that if you're finding value in the content, then smash the like button and consider hitting subscribe so you can keep getting content just like this. Now let's get back into that. So now it's time to create that stylized effect. And all we've done so far is develop the image. We've gone into local and created the honing effect, if you will, to make things uh, make more sense to pay attention to the center of the photo. And now we're going to come over to our effects. And this is where we really start to make that keepsake look. We're going to hit add filter and we're going to add a split tone. Now, the way that I like to do this is really just use presets, but you can create your own color looks. I'm going to click oats because I think that's the one that looks great. And this by itself could be that keepsake look that you're going for in the image. However, what I think I need to do here is pull down on the balance. So that way it kind of darkens everything and it's favoring the shadow tones or the color that I'm putting into the shadowed areas of my image. And then I can pull up on the amount until that gets to a color that I'm happy with. This is purely subjective. Whatever you find the most fascinating or interesting, that's what this particular option will allow you to do. Then we're just gonna go ahead and click on blending. And this is where I think you will find an opportunity to really explore some cool and creative looks. So just by filtering through these, I really like darken on this particular effect. Uh, multiply doesn't look too bad. Screen and I think classic really does look the best on this particular image. 
This is something you'll have to play around with on your image to see how it's working because the original exposure and the light and how you developed it is really going to play into the way that this works. Now, one of the things that I also like to do for this particular effect is add in a texture layer. Now, the texture is going to help really making this look good in my opinion. Now, the category that I use is gonna be inside of paper, and I like the rice paper dark look. To me, this just looks like it belongs on this particular image, and I'll just lower the opacity so that way it's not as strong. And you can mess around with the brightness until you get it to a place where maybe it makes sense. So for me, I need mine to be a little bit darker, so that's where I'm going to put that. And then the next thing that you can do, and this again is where you have to start to play around with it and figure out what makes most sense for you. And then another thing that you can do is colorize your paper layer or your texture layer. I'm just going to go ahead and click on colorize and it gives me this red, which isn't very pleasant. I'm going to click on my color well here or a color picker, color selector, whatever you want to call it. And this is going to allow me to kind of just move around on the color wheel to figure out what color works best. Now, because I know that I'm working with yellows and browns and reds, I want to stay somewhere in the yellow to red range on this particular effect. I kind of want something that's like a brighter orange, and this is kind of like giving me that sepia tone vibe uh, without making this a sepia tone type of image. And then I'll just go ahead and close that out, and we can mess around with the amount here because I think it may be a little too strong, so maybe we'll pull down on the colorization uh, to something like that. So if we turn this off and turn it on, you can see it just kind of makes the overall image look a little bit more put together. So here is what we came into the edit bay with, and here is the final result. Now, I'm sure some of you are probably wondering, well, Chris, what would that color look like if you had just left that where it was? What I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull up my saturation back to where it was originally. And this is what it looks like when you have the color in there. I'm not a huge fan of the way that this color uh, kind of came through on the overall image. So that's the reason why I pulled down the saturation. Now there are a ton of ways that you could have modified this particular image and gotten a very similar or if not the same look. This is just the way that I like to do it because I like to have flexibility in my editing. The last thing that I recommend doing is saving this as a preset. You'll click this little preset drop down, uncheck the develop section, because again, that's gonna be specific to just your photos. Then you can leave the local adjustments or you can unselect those as well, which is what I'm going to do in this particular case. I'm going to leave just the effects selected. I didn't mask anything. And the only thing that I have in the effects is that split tone. It's set to the way that I want to work. And then I'm just going to go ahead and label this keepsake. And we'll label it keepsake one because it'll probably be a series of things that I add. And then I can just hit save. So anytime that I want to add this to any of my images, I can come over here to the presets and close this down. And I have keepsake number one right there, ready to go. The last thing, now don't forget that you also have, now don't forget, you also have access to the snapshot feature. So if you make a look you can definite, that you like, you can definitely make this a uh, snapshot. So we'll call this keepsake one hit OK. And now I can just jump between the two because you'll notice that each of these are going to look different. Like my final look one is brighter than my keepsake number one. That's something just to keep in mind. So what are your thoughts on this type of effect on a photo? Let me know in the comment section below. I also encourage you to go test this out on your own images. So what are your thoughts? Are you going to test this out on your own images and apply it? Or was this something that you weren't really interested in? Let me know in the comment section below. Until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.